bring value. And um, so I think we're live streaming right now, if I'm not mistaken, which right. is great. So uh, it's amazing how still I can stand, isn't it? Yeah, you, you are. You are not even blinking. Uh, <laughs> I am wearing a tie. I just want you to know that because I had two or three different things today and I had to get dressed. So you're a better, better man than I am. I'm, nah. I, I am sporting though. I'm very selective. I see. Um, I see. I'm, I'm selective. I, I, it's, it's the, it's the global luxury Navy blue luxury I specialist. I love it. I love it. Okay. I love it. So, um, I, I brought that out for you. And, um, so you're based, um, in Chicago, but you travel across the globe helping, uh, Cobalt Banker out. Um, I do. and, uh, hold on. My, my assistant is saying I'm, I'm not streaming live on Facebook yet, which is, we've odd. got gremlins today. Oh my goodness. Um, so what I'm going to do here, right, give me one second as we do have gremlins. That's a great uh, analogy. We definitely have some gremlins going on here. Um, all right. So I'm going to I hit stop live stream and I'm going to go back on the live on Facebook. All right, perfect. So... Is it working for you? Yeah, now it's preparing the live stream. So travel, are you, uh, I've, I've seen some of these, these videos, people are being creative with videos where somebody's at home on their treadmill and they set their suitcase on it going really slow, like they're waiting, you know, for their suitcase. Are you going through any travel withdrawal yourself or are you loving it? Well, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a standstill guy. And part of the reason I, I uh, accepted that gig was that it was world travel. Yeah. And uh, it's always been something that, you know, I've enjoyed. However, I, I love being here in Chicago. I'm, I'm, I'm married and um, the guy I'm with is a real estate agent. So now he has to listen to my calls all day and I have yeah. to listen to his. I think yeah. our dog is our dog needs an anxiety pill to keep wondering why we're both here so much. <laughs> so, we, you know, it'll get back to normal at some point, slowly but surely. Yeah. Um, you know, your, your comment earlier, uh, as big as Realogy is, uh, we have a COVID response plan and a COVID response team that's been formed. Oh, really? I, I was blown away with how lightning fast such a large, a large uh, company could move so quickly. Mm. But they did. But they did. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you hear corporations being like the mothership, right? Like in, in Star Wars, right? And it moves slowly. They make slow turns. But yeah, know, and that's how we used to be. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I am. I'm not sure. Like you said, the gremlins are still there. It's thinking. It's thinking. I'm going to refresh this, but we can start our conversation, and then because um, we are recording this, okay. um, th th so the stream won't be. So, so give us a little uh, background as far as how long you've been in your current position, vice president of of, of, of luxury for Cobo Banker. Well, I started selling real estate uh, uh, 25 years ago here in Chicago, and uh, uh, we had a good run. I mean, we were just fortunate. We had a good run, and um, it was very transactional, and then I got into luxury in 1999, and then um, that's where I knew I wanted to be, and then for me, it just happened that in 2015, uh, the Cobble Banker brand in uh, Madison, New Jersey uh, came after me to overhaul the luxury program for Caldwell Banker, which was in operation since 1933. If you can just imagine, they've gone through some changes, but it's hard to imagine that, that long in time, all the things we've, we've seen. So we relaunched uh, Global Luxury in 2017, April. So, um, wow, it's April now. That's, I didn't think about that. I'm Three years. Yeah, and and we, re we, re we took, it all, took it all apart and relaunched the whole thing. Uh, everything our print media our digital media our websites the the products we provide for the agents to meet with the consumer the just the whole way we did everything our look our logo you name it and um so you you, you rebranded and you were in the position uh, you relaunched in april of 2017 but when when were you brought on your current position august of 2015 okay august of 2015 okay yeah and, it took, uh, it took a little took a little bit to figure it out and reorganize and move that big ship uh, operating in so many countries with 
all the things that had to be done. I mean, we had a logo that, you know, was, was old and we had to release it all over the world. And that, that alone took eight months. And then we had to come up with a new logo and rebrand and come up with the, what we wanted to look like and how we wanted to be heard. So it was, uh, it, it was, uh, it was a job. It was a job, a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds like a big undertaking. And um, you guys, as, as a company, Coal Banker, uh, have, have a new logo as of about a year, year and a half ago, correct? Yeah, you can't see it, but I am actually wearing one on my, on my cuff. I made sure I put one on my, my French cuff shirt today so you could see it. But yeah, it's been wildly uh, popular. Uh, we launched it at Jim Blue last year, and uh, we've got uh, a large part of the network has already switched over. They had a 18 month period to do so, so it's uh -huh. been very, very popular. Uh, and it it's across the board, so it's not just the logo that we're going with. It's on everything we have. It's in the offices, on the walls. We have scarves, ties, hand, you know, uh, cuff links, uh, all the materials that you see. We we rebranded the whole thing. Yeah, I was uh, I was actually at the the, the conference in, in Vegas last year. Um, ah, you guys right. did that. Yeah, right. yeah, it was great. So, um, well, that's great. So, tell me, um, you know, a little bit about global luxury and um, do agents have to? So that's your that's your luxury division at Cobalt Banker, and do, do agents have to qualify? Um, to be a global luxury agent, in other words, a certain number of sales, or yes. I know you guys have teamed up with the Institute. Talk, talk to me a little bit about that. Well, we're since the beginning, Cobble Banker Previews, as it used to be called, had a had a minimum that you had to be in the luxury space to be one in that in that specific group. I can't cut this dinging off. I hope I don't know if you can hear it or not. I can hear it. I was wondering if that was on my part, so that's no, all right. Okay. I mean, it's just we're, we're just having one hell of a session today. Yeah, yeah. Technology is um, great when it works, isn't it? Ah, oh, man. So yes, you have to be uh, in a certain group. You have to sell at least three luxury homes every 24 months, which would be the top 5%, top 10% of your local market area, close volume, previous 12 months. And you have to attend the certification and you have to become a member of the Institute. You have to prove your production. It's not a one-time thing where you get to stay in it forever. So we want them to be rep representative of who we think they should be in the field. And I know you're big on your education and your class, and I uh, know you feel the same way. We want people to know what they're doing out there. Mm -hmm. It is Absolutely. to raise the bar. Yeah. No, it, it, it is so. And you guys have a print publication that you release for, uh, for your global luxury as well. And you have yeah. properties that you represent. There's some great articles. Um, the idea behind it is it's not an agent to agent publication, although it can be correct. It's, it's really geared towards the consumer, but yeah. agents benefit from it. It's, a, it's a, a really excellent listing tool, but it is created uh, with the consumer in mind. So the content, the content is really, really incredible. We write stories. This, this issue that just went out um, uh, yesterday, just shipped yesterday to you know, spaces around the world, uh, has a really incredible story about a $5 million speedboat and um, uh, old, uh, beautiful, beautiful Rolls Royce Jaguar cars that have been retrofitted to become electric. And of course, wine and food, things like that. So mm -hmm. it's really geared for the consumer with great editorial, a lot more than you would normally see in a real estate book. You, you can tell when you look at it, it's consumer facing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the quality, the, 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 the look, the feel, the touch, um, it's definitely definitely got that feel, and you guys offer that online as well for consumers or agents, correct? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We do the print version and we do the digital version. Um, we we send it to uh, oh about 12, 13 countries right now. We're in airport lounges, uh, Barnes and Noble in the United States, um, and then of course the, it's on our luxury blog for digital use. That's great. So, and, and the luxury blog, is that something you don't, do you have to be a member to have access to that? No, that's available to anybody. That's, that's uh, largely consumer facing as well. We make sure to stay away from uh, pushing properties when consumers have access because it's a turnoff. So you see a bunch of beautiful eye candy on the, on the blog, but there's no, uh, there's no like, you know, price reduced or, I'm for sale. There's none of that. It's all stories about lifestyle, travel, 
design, architecture, and um, it's, um, but you can tell, and our, our intent is that all that content is very well written by, we've got a great team of writers, and the agents are able to take those stories and use them. And they're just, that's what it's, that's really what it's for. So it's consumer facing. But if I'm looking for something to talk about in my monthly contact or my whatever you're doing in your newsletter, there's always something in there that I can choose from that is luxury related and makes you look like you're the luxury, uh, like you're the luxury leader in your market or helps mm -hmm. at least. And what, what's that? Um, I'll type that in. Um, to our again the, the good news is we are recording Craig and although we're not live streaming right now what we're going to do is we're going to still post the recorded uh, version of this in the same group said we stream live so uh, we'll still get uh, tons of traction on this and those of you that are reaching out to me right now I'm getting uh, my phone buzz and saying hey where's the live where's the live we're going to be posting a replay of this for those of you that didn't go through the zoom uh, most people watch this through the live so no worries we're, we're still going to get it out we're still recording yeah. Yeah. Uh, again uh, as Craig said we have some gremlins with the technology <laughs> today <laughs> we do uh, and, and what is uh, what? What's do you know the URL of the blog? I can type it in. It's blog. Dot luxury dot com. And we're very proud of it. We think it's got great content. We've got a lot of readers. We've got uh, probably maybe thirty percent of the consumer readers that would do the agents. Okay. They're just people who sign up from architecture, lifestyle, and just the industry uh, to write uh, or to get great stories. And then sometimes we use them for content as well. That's, that's awesome. Uh, and it is great. Um, you've been gracious enough to drop copies in the mail to, to me, and I appreciate that. Um, and it, it, it's, it's really, um, it, it's awesome. So you guys are doing some really good stuff there. Um, talk to me a little bit about... Uh, you know, if, if an agent is watching the replay of this and you know, maybe they're a successful agent, but they're selling you know, more average price properties and maybe a high end home or a luxury home here or there. Um, but they want to break into luxury more and more consistent. Um, any words of advice that you'd have for agents looking to break into luxury, Craig? Well, you know, we've all got advice, but I, I, I guess, I, I guess for me, cause I, I, I was an agent doing 70, 80 deals a year and uh, I was worn out to be honest with you. Just, you know, that's, that's a grind. Yeah. And uh, they were, you know, average to, to nice price. And then I stumbled onto my first big luxury sale and uh, it uh, changed everything. And what I did realize though at the time is that I wasn't really up to speed. The other agents were better than I was. They all had marketing plans, I didn't. They had a presence in print and of course it was mostly print and newspaper at the time because this was back in 1999 when I started mm -hmm. selling luxury and, and stopped out of uh, just selling normal uh, properties. And I, and I think those things today still ring true you know, they were doing more than I was doing on virtually every front. And I saw it. And when I was with those agents, I realized they're better than I am. Even though I was good and doing a lot of deals, they were doing the deals I wanted to do. And uh, somewhere along the line, they figured that out. Hopefully they got that from somebody else. And so that would be my advice is to organize it together and get your stuff together. You know, educate yourself, get a marketing plan, Find, get yourself a budget. I know budget is a word that realtors can barely spell. I know, <laughs> I get it. But, yeah. you know, but that is the reality of the world that we, we play in. And if you do those things, I think those will help you. And then I always say, keep getting better. I love your prove them wrong. I, I, I use that all the time. Thank you. I mean, I, I obviously didn't come up with it. So I, there's a, a, a company out there called Iconic and they do canvas, uh, posters, if you will, and wall art. And I teamed up with them for a property that we were marketing, um, you know, about two and a half million dollars. And they showcased some of their canvas artwork throughout the property as a photo shoot, if you will. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> the one that really stu stood out to me was the prove them wrong. And I had that in my office. It's on my book. Um, and 
you know, we've all had somebody that has told you you can't do something. And oh, yeah. you know, there, there's intrinsic motivation and entr- extrinsic motivation. And I believe in both. And yeah. uh, I love when someone, Craig, tells me, uh, you know, you guys can't do that. You won't yeah. do that. I, you know, I, let me share. I we hear a lot of that. And a lot of times it's us, right? right? It's us thinking, oh my God, I don't know if I can do that. I mean, yeah. I, I went on a few listing presentations where, you know, I was shaking in my boots. Mm-hmm. And then I, and then later I got much bigger ones and much bigger ones and they became easier to handle. And, yeah. but I, I went in thinking, at least I'll get to do this presentation and get some practice. And I would never even thought I'd win, but you know, it's that's your mind talk or your mindset. You're absolutely right. Um, Lisa Hayes says, be careful how you talk to yourself because that's guess right. what? You are listening. That's right. You're always listening. Yeah. Good, good point. So, um, what about, uh, you know, luxury divisions, you know, you, you guys run, you know, a, a huge luxury division and, and um, you're global, you, you know, how many, you know, how many, and you might not know any of these, these off the cuff, but generally speaking, you know, how many countries are, are members in your luxury division? Um, you know, mem- you know what, what, what are we talking here? Of our 44 countries that we're in right now, uh, about 30 of those have some form of luxury division. Some of them are obviously far larger than others, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. in U.S. sales last year, we we remained in the number one position that we've been in for the last eight years. Uh, we sold $144.4 million each and every day in sales of 1 million or greater. So we did a total of 27,595 transactions with an average sale price of about 2 million. So, uh, you know, we're obviously much bigger in other markets and very sure. small in others. Yeah. And that's our, um, that's our, that's our footprint. And we're, we just opened, this is, this is going to blow you away. We just opened a new luxury office in Italy Oh, last, last week. Oh, really? It, it was not easy to do. And oh, uh, there is no big launch party. There is no big gathering. But it, the franchise was sold. The office was chosen. The lights are on. The press release went out. Now we have to sit and wait because <laughs> they can't have a gathering. Yeah. But they did it anyway. So that gives us four global luxury offices, which are standalone branded products, unlike Caldwell Banker. So you don't see Caldwell Banker, the blue, you see just the black uh, global luxury. They're, they're, they're very different. Interesting. Okay. So that, that's, uh, you know, I just did a training for a group in Italy last week, actually. And, uh, you know, I'm Italian. I've been there a couple times. So hey, we'll have to do something together over there, Craig. That'd be fun. <laughs> any reason, to, any reason to get over to Italy? Yeah, absolutely. Good, good wine. Good, real good wine. Um, you know, if you were to fill in the blank here, in your opinion, uh, when the shelter in place is removed, um, the agents, offices, or teams that will thrive like never before are those that have blank in common. Oh. Just the conversation I had uh, prior was on this, um, and it's tough, but we're going to have to adapt because it's a new normal. And Realogy and all our brands, especially Cobble Banker that I'm from, we are not really sure what it's going to look like when we go back to work. We're working on that now. Uh-huh. We've learned a lot of a lot of things can now be done remotely and from home. Yeah. Uh, we're learning that that's a great thing and not so much for others. Not everybody's in the same situation. And I think the agents, um, in fact, I hope this comes out the right way, but I think there's going to be a big culling of agents that don't adapt and figure this out because I heard a lot of whining from some agents over the last three weeks, you know, and I asked them, what are you doing? And they said, well, you know, not much. I'm like, well, you need to be right this is the time to become really, really good at this virtual stuff. You know, much like our gremlin field show today. Yeah. You know, this is the time to be able to talk to people about virtual showings and how to do walkthroughs on FaceTime and, uh, and understand that, a, you know, a closing could still take place and a buyer may have to go on his own and there's a glass wall between, you know, the buyer and the, and the, and the lender and it's, it's a new day. And I had some agents complaining that they felt that we weren't needed 
because so much of this was being done remote. And I just don't think that's the truth. I think we are needed. I think we got to figure out how to stay in the, stay in the mix though. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. You have to be relative, right? During you gotta, this time. Yeah. You, I mean, you bring you value got to get in there and, 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 and figure it out. So I think being uh, strong and, and adapting to the new norm, whatever that's going to look like, I think that's going to help us stay relevant. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of different perspectives on that question as well. And, you know, I definitely think those agents that are bringing value to their clients and to their sphere and to their database and to their community um, and are being visual um, and being authentic and yep. not salesy, right? Uh, right. They, they will hit the ground running, you know, more so, of course, than those that, you know, have uh, sheltered in place and, and have gone off the radar, so to speak. Oh, yeah, totally gone off the radar, waiting on someone to call. You know, yeah. that is... That's 1982. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not today. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Um, so t- talk to me a little bit about um, your predictions as far as pricing in the luxury market. Let's start re- really, you know, I guess here in the States, um, although we have people all over that watch, um, you know, when the, you know, May, June, you know, I know state by state, depending on governors, but when the shelter in place is removed, you know, again, there might be a second round of this, nobody knows. How do you think it's going to affect, uh, you know, luxury sales overall, as well as luxury pricing? Well, uh, I've been on several of those calls. I'm going to do another one with a group of uh, 40 agents around the country after this. Here's what Real G and Cobble Banker have seen is that we're hanging on to most of our listings. Uh, listing sales volume has dropped, but listing sales prices have not dropped. And we're only focused on the, on the, on the high end here. Right. But another thing on the flip side of that is that there are a large number of, of buyers that now want to renegotiate and uh, work, on a, work on a new price and a new closing and that kind of thing. So that's out there. Um, I know that I think might've been reported yesterday, might've been reported today. I don't remember, but that's happening. But, um, one of our top agents in the country, uh, Jade Mills, she's num- number one in the whole network. Is she Beverly Hills? She Beverly Hills. Yes. Uh, people still under, they want, and they expect to pay fair market value because they're not, they're not, this is not vulture swamping in. This is, this is going to be over and this is a home they're going to live in. And so they're looking at it. They're not looking at it like this is the time to come in and buy a bunch of homes at, at a rock bottom price. That's, we're not in that crisis. We're in a different one of sitting and waiting. So we're expecting luxury to lead the way when we come out of this. I mean, we're expecting it to be strong. And, you know, will it come back to the first quarter of 2020, which was admittedly just hot? Um, we hope so. But, you know, everything doesn't have to be about that super hot January, February, March. Right. Right. It, good would be good. Yeah. 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 No, that, that's interesting. You know, we're getting different perspectives from, Oh folks. yeah. I had, uh, you know, somebody from Beverly Hills share their thoughts and uh, they're definitely seeing buyers that are low balling, uh, you know, yep. investor mentality, putting multiple offers in on yep. high end and luxury properties uh, in their, they do believe that, uh, luxury home prices are going to be affected in that particular market, you know, 10 to 20 percent. Um, and that was an interesting perspective. You know, you hear others that are very optimistic. We're hoping that there's some pent up demand. Right. Uh, and, um, well, you know, that is an expensive market. And so there's there's a lot of a lot of things that can happen. You know, if you're in a more if you're in a smaller luxury market where there's less play. But, you know, there was. Our, our, our office in Beverly Hills had a, had a closing, you know, a week ago for 48 million, 43 million. So Jeez. I know it's, so it's, you know, it's, uh, but yeah, when you have prices that high that really are just what they are, there's, they're not based on confidence. They just are what they are. Mm-hmm. There's room for a lot more play. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think, I don't think Chicago will sink. I don't think, I don't think, uh, Boston will sink, except it's been hit so hard, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but we have a top agent in Boston who's, you know, he did four deals last week. 
all luxury. So, you know, it's different. It's all on video. Yeah. Uh, and he's in one city, they're in another. And, uh, but he, they're, they're working it out. Well, talk, let, let's talk about the importance. He said, you said it's all on video. What words of advice uh, from a tools and technology standpoint, you know, what are some of your better, uh, you know, Coal Banker luxury agents doing um, to, you know, to bring value or to showcase and market some of these unique and high end properties? I, I would say two part A overall, but B during this, you know, COVID-19, uh, you know, time period that we're in now. Well, we're on Teams all day long, Microsoft Teams. Uh, some are using Zoom just because that was their product choice, but we have agents doing uh, full listing agreement, full listing uh, consultations on, on Teams. You can bring in people from all over. Um, it doesn't matter where they are. You can have them all on the screen. People can see each other's demeanor, and that's big. I mean, I hate that my photo won't switch to me, but yeah, it is yeah. what it is. But sure. when, you're able, when you see everybody's face and their movements and their body language, you can tell if they're having a conversation moving forward or not. Mm -hmm. uh, my team here in Chicago, because we still sell, uh, they did their uh, walkthroughs and uh, final showings on FaceTime. So, okay. Um, Adapting, right? Pivoting. Just adapt. Yeah, just, just adapting. And uh, I don't know about all the others that are out there. Uh, but those are the those are the two that I know we're on. I mean, I'm on Microsoft Teams probably five times a day for different things. Okay. Some of it is to work out a problem with a seller. Uh, some of it is to talk about what we've got to get a new listing, mm -hmm. and some of it is just about a group of people to talk. Okay. Um, if you were to move to a new state, you know, wow. you and your husband, you hung your license with a, a Cobalt Banker somewhere else. Um, what words of advice, uh, you know, what would you do? What would be the first two or three things you would do to establish yourself in a new state and a new area where you didn't really have much of a database, didn't know a lot of people? What would be the first two or three things that you would recommend uh, to an agent um, that is looking to establish himself as a, a luxury, top luxury agent in a new market? Well, I would join a great brand and that could be a big brand or a an independent, but I would join the most reputable, largest brand that's got a real statement about market share because you can't fudge that. Agents used to fudge that for years. They, you know, we're all number one. Everyone's number one. Everyone's, yeah. well, that's just not true. Right. And those things are important if you want to work in the luxury space. You have to be able to prove what you say because right now I think there's a, I've heard this lately, a flight, a, 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 a flight to excellence. And I, I, I agree. I think people are looking for top quality agents. Second thing I would do is uh, uh, learn what's going on in that market. Don't, don't be so, I got to sell a house today. Learn what's going on in the market first. Learn it like, learn it like no one else in the office is to where you're the expert over them. And then I would say, if you want to get in the luxury space fast, partner up with somebody and don't worry about splitting the commissions. Just get with somebody, work with them. Then you've got co-listings. Because until you, until you get something, you don't have anything to talk about. Yeah. Let's face it. We sell real estate. Until you have a listing, it doesn't matter how incredible you are, you right. don't have anything to show. Yeah, great point. That's a great point. You know, one of the questions I ask the guests is a, a win at home question. So uh, you had mentioned um, that, you know, even the dynamic with you, uh, where you're doing a lot of travel, and your husband, who's an agent, now you both have to, you know, shelter in place and you're, you're dealing with the internet and you're dealing with tight quarters and you need privacy as far as some of these, these uh, calls that you're on, uh, as far as quiet in the background, yeah. that kind of thing. Any words of advice uh, for those agents, uh, team leaders that are not used to uh, working um, in these uh, type of environments that maybe are helping uh, you um, cope and adapt during this time? Well, I would tell you, patience is big. You know, patience is big because everybody's got to have their space, but you're all crammed in there together. Everyone's got a different setup. Some people have a multi-story home. We happen to have a loft with no doors. Mm. That's what we live in. So sure. um, if you want to close the door and have a conversation, it's got to be in the bathroom. And that's just, you know, that, that doesn't work too well. So sure. we move from room to room. Yeah. Uh, very patient with each other. Normally we would have strangled each other by now, but, but we get it, you know, here we are. 
Uh, he has to turn everything off when I'm on the phone. I have to turn everything off when he's on the phone. Can't have a bunch of background music. Uh, we have to make sure the dog's taken care of so he doesn't come in the screen. You know, just we're just working it out together. So patience and accommodate each other and just 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 know don't don't kill anybody yet. Yeah, yeah, Not yet. yeah, yeah. Hopefully, uh, you know, we're, both you and I are based in Illinois, and uh, so hopefully this doesn't string on too 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 long. But um, again, if anybody has a question, uh, please type it in. And again, uh, for those of you that are, uh, my phone's vibrating. Hey, where's the live? Where's the live? I do apologize. Uh, we will repost this to the groups that we normally do, and we'll get Craig a copy as well. And um, you know, again, we're talking about be patient, right? Craig said that's his big uh, tip is be patient. You know, he's being patient with his camera and video today. I'm being patient with the Facebook Live and, um, you know, some, some really good uh, tips and recommendations there. Um, last question. Um, is there a funny or memorable story or experience in real estate that comes to mind uh, that you'd like to share, maybe going back when you were, you know, getting into luxury in 1999 as an agent, or maybe now uh, in your current position that maybe one of your global luxury members has shared with you? Um, I got one for me. I got one Please. for myself. Love yeah. to hear it. So showing a husband and wife, it was in Chicago, it was in the winter, and not everybody de-ices their staircases, mm. which is a big, a big no-no. Well, we made it at the staircase and I slipped and fell down, went down a couple of steps. They helped pick me up. Then when we did the showing and then when we left, got down the staircase, slipped on the sidewalk again, fell right on my caboose, oh. only, only to get out to the street to find the car had been towed. So it, it was one of those, you know, talk about learning, learning just, it's okay. That would have been uh, one, but I, I was furious then, but now I laugh about it now. That was, that was hysterical. Uh, it went from worst, <laughs> went from worst to worst. Well, I had a, I had an agent on our team who parked his car at a parking lot he shouldn't have and the wife left her purse in there. So the car got towed with her purse. That, that, the rest of that day didn't go too well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you got to Like I, I, I believe you could, and I'm sure I could. We could write a book on stories oh, man. They, with our Seen clients. Some things, seeing some things. Yeah. Well, good. If somebody wants to find out more about um, Cobalt Banker or your Global Luxury Program, I typed in the uh, the blog dot cobaltbankerluxury dot com. But uh, where where should they where should they go, Craig? Well, they could uh, they could contact me, Craig dot Hogan at cobaltbanker dot com. Craig.Hogan at CobalBanker.com. We also have a career site on CobalBanker.com. You can just look for careers. We have a luxury recruiting site. If you just want to learn more about what our agent package looks like, what we offer. Um, our Cobble Banker luxury site, I think is a beautiful example of our inventory, our story, our history. Uh, the blog has got the most stuff on it if you want to read about the report if you want to read about the look at wealths which are those happen to be two of the most read industry products in history in history. really yeah 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 it's unbelievable it it uh, broke every record that we've ever done and our ad agency said they'd never seen anything like it but the content was interesting and not all about just buying property it was about trends that are that are actually happening and things we expect and the look at wealth was so interesting because we were looking at the millionaire millennials and they're not all living in the basement, believe it or not. There are, there are, there are some out there. Now there's not many, it's about 700,000 of them, but they're changing the real estate uh, process as we know it because they now own as many homes as their parents and they are actually buying more expensive properties and lifestyle location is their big thing. It's not just location, it's lifestyle and location. And uh, we, we uncovered a lot of trends in there and that just it connected with people. So that's all our stuff, you know, the, all those sites will kind of give you an okay. idea of who we are, but I'm always around. Yeah, you guys on that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, did you partner up with Wealth Engine on that? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Used, uh, Wealth Engine is our, our uh, analytical and data and demographic, which is, yeah. 
Wealth Engine is just super. They really and, are. And we use the Institute for a lot of, uh, a lot of luxury research content. And then we yep. have three writers that work on the, on the, that, are, that are from the finance world that work on it with us. So it's a big team. Uh, it's a big report. Um, hopefully you're still getting a copy. I, I know we've been sending them to you. Yes, yes. Okay, good. Um, those have a lot of international and, and national uh, stories in it and content. So it's a good snapshot of what's going on in the world. I think for me, I always felt it was better to know about a few other markets than just Chicago. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, people kind of want to know, you know, more than just your little frog pond. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, I was just uh, in Mazatlan, Mexico. It seems like two years ago, but it was uh, about five, six weeks ago now. And, uh, and that was uh, what a great experience, but you know, just diving in with some local agents, you know, their whole perspective, and you know, when they represent luxury sellers, they, those sellers want to keep a low profile and, yeah. and they don't want to draw tons, tons of attention on their property that's on the market. So, you know, just like you said, having a finger on not just your local pulse, but feeder markets, but also, you know, knowing what trends are and what's happening outside of your markets, um, you know, helps. Uh, when you, you, you meet with buyers, it helps when you meet with sellers and uh, it helps with, you know, some analytics and predictions as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, good. Well, Hey, uh, keep doing what you're doing. You're a great guy. If I can be of any assistance, uh, but appreciate you and global luxury and um, hopefully we'll see, hopefully we'll see each other at a conference sooner than later. Sooner than later. Sooner than later. Thank you so much. And it was yeah. a pleasure. I yeah, appreciate it, Craig. Best of luck. All right. Stay safe.